All right, what's up, guys? Today's Thursday, February 3rd for our Zillow Flex weekly training. We are a little light today. Where is everybody at? Where are my people at? In the office? Whoever's in the office, tell them to jump on the Zoom or we will turn the Zillow Flex leads off. Let's get some faces. If you're on the meeting, please show your face. I would love to see your face. So I know I'm not talking to a blank screen. On today's, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, we got some people jumping on. Maybe we'll just wait a minute. Yeah. All right, we got like 73 more people just jumped on last minute. Let's do this. Um, so Zillow Flex, guys, well, uh, today what I want to talk about is we're going to uh, randomly pick a call so we can hear it, critique it. I'm going to go over uh, our notes from our growth advisor that we meet with every single week and just kind of discuss a couple things, a couple of tweaks. Before I get into any of that, um, please mute yourself. Um, before I get into any of that, guys, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat. I have the chat open. So if you have a question or anything, just type it in there and we can get to it. And I can call on you to unmute yourself if we need to. Um, before we get into that, guys, I just want to really reiterate the power of Zillow Flex and just how important it is that we stay on top of this. Um, in order for us to jump on to, to get the partnership with Zillow and Zillow Flex, we are probably one of maybe six or seven teams here in the South Bay that are on Zillow Flex. So it's a pretty big deal, guys. Not everyone gets to have Zillow. Um, there's a really long, drawn out interview process. I had to get recommended by somebody. Like there's all kinds of things that have had to happen. I had to pull a lot of strings. And it's something that's been in the works for probably uh, over a year before we got accepted into the Zillow Flex program. Um, I had to go through an extensive kind of background check and interview. I had to really break down our systems and show, you know, the, the management at Zillow that we have the capacity the know-how, the systems, the processes, and the manpower to handle their referrals. Um, Zillow is a multi-billion dollar company. It spends, you know, probably hundreds of millions of dollars a month on advertising to get people to visit their site and to click on properties and, you know, generate leads and stuff like that. So um, I just want to really reiterate, guys, that our partnership with Zillow is a big deal. Um, and because of that, there is a lot more accountability when it comes to Zillow Flex. And as we get more and more people to join our team, it's going to be harder for you to get on Zillow Flex. We're not just going to put everyone on there because if we do put too many people on Flex and they're not performing, um, the bottom line is Zillow will kick us off the program. If we're not performing, if we're not converting at, you know, up to par with, you know, the other teams in the area, there they will kick us out you know that doesn't happen overnight they give you time to kind of ramp up and get started and all that but you know i meet with the growth advisor every single week who tracks our numbers at a high level and then i come back and report to you guys which means we expect the same level of accountability from you guys if you want to be part of zillow flex if you don't want to be part of zillow flex it's perfectly fine it's optional but it is going to be a it's, it's a privilege guys that you guys have to earn and also have to maintain um, with that being said, I mean, if you just look just this month, I think we got eight or nine deals in contract in the month of January from Zillow flex. So like we've been in flex for a little over six months now it's rocking and rolling. Now it's moving. Leads are coming in. Leads are getting nurtured. People are starting to convert and it's only going to continue to grow. Um, if we put the time and energy into it, guys. So being on these meetings is important. Making sure you're paying attention is important. Why is everyone looking backwards? Are you guys streaming this on the big screen? 
Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not talking to myself because your backs are turned. Um, but uh, it's it's a big deal, guys. Um, just to kind of shout out a couple people, um, Z How and um, AJ, they closed a $3 million lead off Zillow Flex, um, which is probably our biggest one to date. I know we've had some that are in the uh, high 1 million, 1.5, 1 1.7, 1 1.6. You know, we've had a couple of low ones here and there, but majority of the deals that we're closing from Zillow Flex are well into the millions. Um, and for some of the agents on our team who have really been uh, going all in on Zillow Flex, like they're starting to see a lot of business coming in. They're seeing referrals. Uh, I know Aaron and Brian uh, got a Zillow Flex contract within one week. That same client referred a friend or a family and they got a listing from that a sell to buy. So they're selling their house and they're buying another one. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff happening guys, just from Zillow flex. And that's, that's only one of our lead sources. We're getting about 250 connections a month right now from Zillow. Um, and we're probably, probably getting about two or 300 other leads from other sources as well. So just know guys that if you're new to the game, and even as a reminder for some of our, our veterans, um, the ability to have a stream of leads coming in at all times where all you got to do is click a button on your phone. Like sometimes you don't know what you, what you have until you don't have it. Uh, there's that saying, but I know maybe uh, Louie, uh, can you unmute yourself, Louie? Yeah. I'm calling on Louie because Louie is, Louis is a veteran in the game. You know, we, he's been in the game a long time. He's actually one of my mentors that helped me. But Louie, how was it back in the day when we first got in the business to get, to get leads? I mean, what, how were we getting leads? Well, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. We, we have to pound the phone. Like, there's no tomorrow. And, and, and the leads that we get, sometimes comes from the title company that everyone in America, including their mom and pop have already called them. So, you know, the, the hard part is how to penetrate on that particular uh, setup. With this one, you know, it's, it, the timing is always important. And so when, when we get the lead at Zilloflex, my understanding is these are hot buyers or hot sellers and we, we jump on it right away, then there's a great possibility that we will be able to connect. So it's, yeah, it, yeah it's harder before, in my opinion. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and I wanted you guys to hear that from Louis, who's been in the game, you know, longer than me, right? I've, I'm going on over 18 years now. And Louis taught me a lot of stuff when I first got in the business. So he's already been doing it before us. I mean, it's literally to get leads and to find clients. It's literally a phone book and a phone that you have to hand dial. This is how we started. And we're, we're on the phone calling for three, four, five hours a day, just pounding the phones, trying to book appointments. Uh, the ant totally revolutionized the way people buy and sell homes now. And you guys are all coming into the game right now. Or for those of you guys that have been in the game, we're at a point in time where People go online, they see a property, they click on something through the internet that comes to you and it gets assigned to an agent. And that's a hot opportunity right there where your phone could ring today and you can accept the lead and you can be within a couple hours, you could be showing a $2 million property, right? $2 million property, even after commission splits and what Zillow takes and all that stuff. Um, once you're up and running on your own, I think the minimum check you'll probably make is six or 7,000 based off an of average deal. Um, that's take home. And if it's a, if it's a bigger, you know, deal, you know, like a 1.5 or a 2 million or, or whatever, the commission is going to be even larger. Um, but we're just going off an average price point of 900,000. So what I just really want to reiterate guys is that every time your phone rings, be prepared that that's a minimum of 7,000 bucks that could go into your pocket on a minimum, right? So with that being said, if my phone was ringing and I know this is the game that we're playing, I'd be trying to answer every single call 
as long as I know I can handle that lead, right? So that's that's the other thing I want to touch on too, is that it's not just, just about answering every call, right? Because we're in a point where we have, sometimes we have too many leads, right? So it's answering enough calls to keep your pipeline full, to keep you uh, full with opportunity, but not taking too many where you're dropping the ball and you're not calling people back and you're not able to stay on top of them, right? And so for the average agent, anywhere from, you know, an agent who's experienced, right, and is busy, anywhere from maybe 10 to 12 leads is kind of a, a average, maybe a sweet spot per month. If you're above average and you're pretty organized, or maybe you're a senior agent, you have junior agents helping you, you can probably take maybe 20 leads a month. Um, if you're just by yourself getting ramped up, maybe you're doing, maybe you could take a little bit less, you know, th and what I mean is so that you can go deep with these leads. You can make sure there's a good quality conversation. You're following up, you're researching properties, you're setting up showings, you're doing all of these things. So there's a big gap, right? Between a, a new agent, an agent who's just on their own, and maybe a senior agent who has help from other agents, there's a big gap in, in capacity levels, right? So as you guys start to get into this flex program and start to get more involved, or if you're already involved, you got to just understand that it doesn't serve you to take more leads than you can, because you're not going to do anything with them anyways, and you're going to take away opportunity from the rest of the people. And Zillow is grading us on our overall conversion of the whole team, the overall score. So if our overall score goes down, then they're going to want to pull back on leads. So you got to try to find that sweet spot of where I have enough leads and I'm staying busy. Um, if, or if you have too many, you got to come to us and let us know you have too many. So let's, let's really treat this like a business. Let's really treat this like a partnership because at the end of the day, Zillow is our partner, right? You guys can now confidently tell clients we are one of Zillow's premier partners. They hand selected us in the group in, in our area. They only hand they only selected a few teams. We're one of the few that they've hand selected because of our track record, because of our you know performance, because of our customer service. And in fact, we uh, have the best of Zillow badge. So the best of Zillow badge means that based off customer surveys we have consistently scored a 90% or higher. So we have been tagged as a best of Zillow team. So that's a big deal, guys, because there's there's a lot of teams. There's over 600, there's probably more now, but there's over 600 Zillow Flex teams all throughout the US. And we're, we're, in the, we're getting a 90% customer satisfaction when they go back and uh, survey these clients. So it is a big deal. Um, but we do got to continually work on our performance and our, on our conversion rates. So let's go over a call. First of all, before I move on, is there any questions from the audience? Anybody have a question based off just what I talked about now? Question, comment, feedback. Type it in the chat. Okay, good. So I'm going to share my screen and we are going to listen to a call. And this is going to be random. So what we're looking for here, guys, is we're not looking for where are we in the position? Where are we in the position in our area? Um, the last time I checked, we were like in the middle. We weren't at the very top as far as our rankings and we weren't at the very bottom. I think out of uh, the whole region of like the Bay Area, there was probably like 20 or 30 teams. I think we were like ranked number 10 or number 12. There you go, 11. Oh, yeah, it was somewhere in there. I, I showed the thing. We get those reports periodically. We weren't at the bottom. We definitely weren't at the bottom and we weren't at the very top, um, but we were with the, with the big teams that we're competing with because some teams are new too. So the conversion, the rankings are a little bit skewed. If it's a brand new team that's only been on flex for a couple months, they still haven't had enough time to kind of get all the data. But for the teams that I know of that are in our area that are performing, that have been in Zillow flex, we were probably in the top five or six. So we're, we're, we're up there. 
Um, and there's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, so let me share this. So before I share this call and hit play, what we're looking for, guys, is we're looking for did the agent follow the script, the ALM script, which is appointment, location, motivation. That's the basics of the script, right? Is you want to book the appointment. You want to identify if this is the location they're looking in, or if there's any other locations. And you want to identify like their motivation, right? How soon are they looking to buy? Um, that's the, at the basic level, ALM is what you want to follow. But in addition to ALM, you want to build rapport and you want to build off of that conversation to try to establish a connection with the client. So it isn't just like, hey, you know, book the appointment, location, motivation, and hang up. It's like we want to find that information out, but use that as conversational pieces to build some connection with the client. So we're looking for that. Um, we're looking for the tonality, the energy level, uh, all of that good stuff. And one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that sometimes you may think you sound loud and you sound energetic, but the phone might dampen you, or if there's noise in the background, that might dampen you as well. So you want to make sure like you're sounding a little bit more enthusiastic than you normally would, because you're probably going to take a couple steps back just because you're on the phone and you're not able to connect with someone live. Just think, even right now, like I'm speaking pretty loud. Um, so I don't know how my energy level is coming off. But if I was in person, it'd be a little bit different right now through Zoom, because I'm on camera and it's going through the Internet. I probably don't sound as enthusiastic as I think I sound right now. So um, you got to keep that in mind that when you're on the phone or when you're recording a video, it drops a bit. So I'm going to play this. Um, this one came in. Let's see, Alfredo. Um, all right. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Give me a thumbs up if I'm you can hear it. Alex here. I'm connecting you to a local agent now. Hello, is this Haley? Yes, hello. Hi, Haley, this is Alfredo with PRG Real Estate. I'm your local real estate agent here in the area. How are you doing today? Doing well, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you for asking. So I noticed that you wanted to tour uh, 267 Bayview Avenue uh, today at 12 p.m.? Yes. Gotcha, okay, sounds good. What I'll go ahead and do, um, I noticed this home has been up for about a little bit over a week now. So I'm just going to call the sellers to make sure it's still available, make sure they haven't accepted any offers yet. Uh, as long as it's still available, I'll go ahead and set it up for us um, at that time, okay? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, of course. And uh, I noticed that this one's a, a three-bed, two-bath um, up by the San Jose Golf Course. Uh, are you mainly trying to look for something in that area? Um, I'm just looking around. Just looking around? Okay. How yeah. has your uh, home search been coming along lately? Have you just been shopping online? You just got started or have you been working with an agent? Yeah, I, I'm just started and this is my, I think it's my first home that I want to tour in person. Before okay. I just, gotcha. I just thought, I, I just tour on the table or resting. Oh, I see. Okay, perfect, Kaylee. Sounds good. And um, uh, like I said, I'll go ahead and follow up with the sellers right now to make sure that it's uh, still available. And mm -hmm. I'll be giving you a call back within the next five to 10 minutes. Uh, if it's not available, I can try to find other homes in the area that, that are similar to this to show you. Um, and we can go from there. Does that sound good? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, well, I'll also be sending you over my contact info right after this call so that you can save it in your phone. Are there any other questions uh, you have before before I let you go? Mm, no, um, uh, we're free after 12, so if 12 doesn't work, we can do a later time this afternoon as well. Okay, so free later in the afternoon, perfect. And uh, did you mention you're a first time home buyer? Yes. You are. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Of course. Great. So I uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Uh, let me gather these details and I'll be giving you a call right back. Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. I'll talk to you soon, Haley. Uh, and by the way, my partners at Zillow will most likely be sending you a survey just in regards to the quality of the call. So if you can do me oh, a favor, okay. just leave me a great review there. That would really help my business. Okay. 
And I'll be in yeah, touch I'll with you. Too. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi there, Alex here. I'm connecting you to a local agent now. Hello. Okay. Um, let's open it up, guys. Um, let's open it up on a couple things. So number one is uh, energy level. How would you guys grade his energy level? Put it in the chat if you can. Energy level. Amazing, great, energy level was great, great, really good, 10 out of 10, okay. So overall, good energy. Yeah, I felt he had good energy, very good. She was low energy and he got her energy up, yep. So yeah, he there's a transfer of energy happening, right? Like she was kind of low, she was kind of timid and he was, you know, he wasn't going over the top where he was blowing her out of the water, right? But he was giving enough to kind of bring the energy up a little bit. Um, you know, so that, that was definitely a good job. Um, how did he do as far as the ALM appointment location and motivation? Throw that in the chat. He booked the appointment, right? And he's going to confirm that. Uh, did he talk about location? Did he talk about motivation? No comments. Um, okay. So yeah, ALM, right? Appointment, location, motivation. He did book the appointment, right? Which is which is pretty explanatory, right? Because she had already requested a time to see it at 12. Um, so he just said, hey, I'll go ahead and confirm. And then he also confirmed that she was, she said that she was available after 12 if that time didn't work. So appointment was solid. Um, location, he asks, is this the only area and she said, well, she's barely getting started. What I probably would have done if I'm, if we're critiquing this call, I would have went a little bit deeper. Yeah. So Zahara says, ask about the area she was looking in, but didn't go very deep. Didn't dig deep on the motivation, but I know he's going to get that on the second call. Right. So I would have maybe asked a little bit more. Oh, okay. Awesome. What, what is it about this area that you love? Right. Or are there any other areas that you've looked at online? You know, so what we're trying to do, guys, because the more the more information we have, the more that we can service the client, the more value that we can bring to the table. And then it also gives us the opportunity to bring more properties to the to the table. Right. Sorry, my dog's barking. Um, if if I only stay on this one property and that property is not available or it's pending already and I didn't find out anything else, then I'm potentially closing off that opportunity, right? Where I can't build off anything else. It's a lot easier for me to ask up front, like, hey, this property is up in San Jose by the golf course. You know, I know that area pretty well. Um, what do you like about this area? You know, do you guys work nearby? Or what's, what's taking you here? What's, what's making you want to see this particular area? And then from there, the client can tell you, oh, well, I don't work too far away. Or I really like the way the house looked. But, oh, okay. Well, is this the only property that you've looked at? Is this the only area you would consider? Right? And you start asking some of those questions. You build off of that initial question. And then you get more information. And then what you can do is you can go back and, and pull up other properties to show them. Um, motivation, right? You know, for motivation, you usually want to ask, Hey, how soon are you looking to purchase a home? Right? Hey, if this one's available, you know, how soon were you hoping to make a move or ideally, when would you like to be in your home? Right? So you can ask that question in a way where it's not, you know, interrogating them, but you ask it in a polite conversational manner, you know, Hey, this is an awesome home. It's really nice. I see the photos, you know, uh, in a perfect world, when would you like to be in your home? And now you're, and then she's going to let you know, well, I'm just looking or, Hey, not anytime soon. Or, you know, we have a lease coming up. That's, you know, that's going to be uh, coming up in a couple months. So I'd like to be there in a few months. And this way, you know, okay, this is a client who's hot and ready and I can either push a little bit more, or maybe this is someone who's kind of just passively looking. And maybe I need to kind of just, uh, you know, take a more passive approach with this client. You know, but you definitely want to go a little bit deeper. So that's that's a part I think uh, Alfredo could have went a little bit deeper in. That doesn't mean he can't still that do that 
So let me just say all this. That doesn't mean he can't go back on the second call when he calls back to confirm that initial appointment. That doesn't mean he can't ask some of this information. So even if let's say you kind of, you didn't ask all the information or maybe it wasn't your best call initially, but you call back, you can still kind of now go into the rest of the script and find out a little bit more about them on that second call, right? And you, you're gonna wanna kind of gauge the client depending on how open they're, they're being. If a client is being maybe a little more closed off, then you may maybe just want to meet them at the property. And when you meet them in person, then you try to ask the questions and build, build a rapport. If the client is being really talkative on the phone and giving you a, you know, a lot of feedback, then you kind of want to maybe spark up some more conversation and go a little bit deeper. So, you know, the ALM and like this strategy we're giving you is kind of a foundation. It's a guideline that you want to follow, but it's not the end all be all. You have to think as the salesperson and be able to read the client so that you can know when to go a little bit more or when to pull back a little bit. Does that make sense, guys? Um, okay, give me some feedback. Are there any questions you have about this call? Any questions you have about the strategy of, of when you're calling these people? Feel free to unmute yourself if you want to unmute yourself too. I think the more information you get from the client uh, gives you an opportunity to break the ice when you do the second call. So there would be continuity in the conversation and that's building trust and rapport right there. That means to say you're listening to them, you're, you, know, you're, you are empathizing with what they want to achieve. And so little by little, it's gaining trust from the client. And the more that we gain the trust, the more that they will talk to us, the more that they will reveal to us what they, what they want and the more that we will be able to get them the house and then convert it. Correct. Yeah. And that's a great point, Louis. Is, um, and Louis is, is probably one of the best people that I've seen, you know, that I've learned from too, on being able to build connection with clients. Because he really, when he talks to people, he really builds a great connection. And that's, that's part of why he's, he's such a, a great salesperson. But like he said, the more questions that you can ask, the more that you can build that relationship, it keeps the conversation flowing. And now, you're not just talking about just this particular home. Now you're actually building a relationship and a connection with the client. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to do. You want these clients to be able to trust you. And um, because that's why someone's going to go with you, right? The way the client came into our world is through Zillow, right? That's how we got the lead. But now it's up to you to build that relationship with that client and take it from a lead to a client, right? to a trusted client, to a client that trusts you and is willing to take direction from you and all that stuff. And the way you do that is by going deeper, talking about things, getting them to laugh, connecting with them, being more interested than interesting, right? Um, this is something I've heard before. I know Emmanuel talked about it too. Um, and what that means, guys, is the more interested you are in them, that means you're like, you're curious, right? You're asking these questions in a curious manner, like, um, hey, what takes you to that place? Like, why would you want to live here? Or what's bringing you here? Or um, do you know that area? Do you work by? You're like, you're really being curious about them. And that lets the client know that you care instead of more just kind of talking about yourself. We're the Zillow Premier Agent. We have 500 five-star reviews. That's you being more interesting, right? You want to be more interested uh, so that the client knows it's about them and not just about you. Um. Herbin asked the question, should we wait for the second call to ask about other agents? Uh, yeah, he kind of mentioned that in passing, um, asking about if they've worked with another agent. I wouldn't go into that too deeply to ask if they've worked with another agent. And here's why. Number one is, can they have another agent? Can they be working with an agent? Absolutely right, right? It's very possible that they have an agent that they're talking to, that they're working with, but... If that agent was so good, they would not be calling you through Zillow, right? So by them calling you through Zillow, that already tells me that even if they are working with an agent, they're creating an opening, right? That agent is, is doing something 
to not make them feel valued enough, right? Where they have to go on their own and go look, look through Zillow. If that agent was on top of it, giving them property, setting up searches and really in tune with their needs, then they would be out looking at homes and not searching on Zillow, right? So there's always a possibility that they have another agent, but that doesn't mean you can't wow them. You can't give them value. That doesn't mean you can't show that you're better than that other agent, you know, by your, by your trust, by the rapport you build with them, the connection with the client. And that client ends up deciding to work with you. Um, and Zahara said in the chat, I'm gonna steal your client if they call me and she will steal your client, right? Because she's so awesome. She's able to connect. She's able to give a ton of value. Her customer service is great. She's, you know, she's just an all around great person. She's a great agent. So if someone meets her, chances are, and that other agent is not up to par, like chances are they're going to meet Zahara and they're going to go, nah, our agent's whack. Like we're going to talk to Zahara, right? Just because she's gotten herself to that level where she's the full package, right? And that's the level that everyone wants to aspire to be where you're knowledgeable, you're aggressive, you have good rapport building skills, you know your stuff, right? It's the full, the full package. Right. And that's where that's where you separate yourself from other agents who maybe are lacking in some of those areas. Um, OK, so let's see. Any other questions, guys, throw them in the chat. Any other questions on this particular call? Any comments or feedback or maybe would you have done this call a little bit different? Anything that I haven't touched on already? All right. Give me a thumbs up if you're learning something today. Let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna go over just some feedback from our growth advisor. Let me share my screen. Okay. This right here, I'm gonna say it right now, when I start going over this particular stuff and I start going over numbers and metrics and conversion rates, this is usually where I lose people. Let me stop sharing my screen. Let me just preface this before I even go into it. People, this is where people tune out because knowing your numbers and your conversion rates and your answer rates and all that stuff, for most people, most salespeople, it's not the sexy part of the business. Let's just call it what it is. Right. People would rather be on calls, showing homes, you know, in front of people laughing, you know, in the office and stuff like that. But this right here, guys, this is the part where the money is made. Right. This is the part where if you know your numbers in and out and you know what fine tuning you have to do and you know what you got to do to tweak your conversion rates. This is how you increase your income. This is how you increase your effectiveness with every client. This is how you increase the number of closings, which is going to increase the number of uh, the commissions that you earn and the number of opportunities that come off of those deals, referrals and all that stuff. Right. So, uh, I need you guys to follow me here when I'm talking about this stuff. And if you can just really embrace knowing your numbers, trust me, you will, will be a better business person and you will take your business to the next level. Um, so let's look at this. Um, so these are some notes from our guy. Hi. So some of the things is uh, we're looking at answer rate, which is going to increase convergence. So I'm going to talk about answer rate today. Okay. Let me see if it's going to show me on here. I'm going to go back to the Silo thing, reports, flex performance. Okay, so we're looking at answer rate here. Why is answer rate so important? Well, quite frankly, the more you answer the phone, the more connections you're gonna get, right? If your phone rings a hundred times and you're only answering 50 times and out of those 50, you, you only win, you know, 20 of them, right? Then that's the 20 opportunities you have because someone else is answering the phone, right? 
right? Because these leads get dispersed to multiple agents. So for every zip code that we get leads in, they're going out to multiple agents in that zip code. So on any given zip code on our team, we have anywhere between five to 10 agents per zip code because we know some agents are in appointments, they're in showings, they just don't answer their phone, they didn't get to it, their phone's in the other room, whatever it might be. So there has to be coverage all across the board so that the call gets answered by somebody on our team. If it doesn't get answered by anybody, then it'll automatically default to one of the, the fallback agents. And we have a couple agents on our team assigned as the fallback. That's the last case. If they don't answer the phone, then we just lost that lead and that lead now goes to another team. So answer rate is extremely important or pickup rate. So let's look at this. Um, call attempts, we're gonna filter by call attempts. And if I'm calling you out right now, this is for the purpose of growth. So nothing personal. I had Herbin, uh, this is in the last 30 days, 341 call attempts, right? This means that his phone rang 341 times. He picked up 47 times out of the 47 of them that he picked up. He was connected with 10 of them because that means when he picked up 47 times, other agents picked up and they might have clicked sooner. So he got 10 connections out of those 47. So his pickup rate was 14%, which is extremely low. Um, so I don't know, something must be going on here. Either a couple things, there could be something going on with his phone. Um, maybe he just didn't answer. I don't know. There could be some things going on here that I have to probably ask Kerbin about because this seems really, really low. Uh, you got Luis, 306 attempts, pickups 162, 12 connections. So you can see here, it was more competitive here for Luis, where he picked up the phone 162 times, but he was only able to connect with 12 of them. Where Hervin picked up only 47 times and he connected with 10 of them. Um, what's your question, Emmanuel? Feel free to uh, unmute yourself. Um, I do have one question. I noticed that like for the past two weeks, I get the notification that I missed the Zillow call, but I never got, um, my phone never rang, but it was like, oh, sorry, you missed you. And I think I asked the manual, I was like, you ever get this? And it literally would, would display the blue thing. And then I'll go into my call logs and I never got a single call. I don't know if there's like an issue or I have to fix something. Um, but yeah, it literally just popped up. You missed an opportunity or missed a phone call, but my phone never rang. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to share something with you that our growth our growth advisor sent to us in a second about answer rate, about where there can be some potential issues, right? So there's a couple different things, right? There's the agent is not answering, right? So there's an issue of capacity level or they're too busy. There's that. And then, you know, this is all, remember, this is all being broadcasted through phones and Wi-Fi and internet. So technology does come into, come into play. So there could be some issues with the technology that can skew these. But you guys also know overall if you're answering the calls or not, right? So Hervin in the chat said that, um, you know, and I, and I know because I've talked to Hervin one-on-one, -on -one, he was juggling too many leads to take on more for that month, right? And I think we did pause them at some points. Uh, I'm back in action this month. So it could have been for him that he just, he had too many and he wasn't able to, to answer the phone, right? But you can see that his phone was ringing. Um, you got Luis, you can start seeing the numbers, 306, Alexa Lee. And basically what we're looking at at the end of the day is we're looking at the pickup rate. So 14%, 53, 44, 29, 45. So I'm gonna filter this by pickup rate. Diana Monica had an 80% pickup rate, George 80%, Mitch 79%, Aaron 70, 69, 68, 53, 50. 45. And then it just goes lower from there. So where's the benchmark on pickup rate? We want to be at least like trying to get to that 70% or higher, right? There's no way you can answer every call. 50% is probably like a bare minimum, right? That's like, you're barely, you're barely making it. If you're under 50%, you're just not answering the phone. You're just, we got to, we're going to have to probably take you off some leads or pause you or something. 
right? Because then when you're paused, then it, then it won't affect your pickup rate. Um, and that's where we maybe need to make some tweaks. If you're 50% or above, you know, you're, you're, you're making it into the green, but we should be striving for 70% plus. And there's some things that we can do to tweak that. And there's some things that we're considering doing where we're going to might do shifts and have only agents take on leads during certain uh, one week and off the next week, because there is, there is the thing where we're battling too many leads and some agents are just overwhelmed. Some people did get sick too in the last 30 days where some people had COVID and stuff like that. So there was a few things going on in the holidays. We'll get more of a clearer picture going forward now, now that we're back into uh, the new year and stuff like that. And there's no like holidays right now or anything. Um, but the moral of the story, guys, is the best teams on Zillow Flex, the ones that are converting at the highest level, their answer rates are like 70, 80% or higher. They're just answering more calls. So at the very minimum, assuming you're not busy enough, right? If you just answer the phone more and you just keep your phone next to you all the time, when you're working, if you're, if you're on today and you're working today, your phone should be next to you. You should have your alerts turned on, all those different things. You're, you don't want to have it on vibrate. You got to do all these things that you got to do to make sure you're not missing those calls because it's a numbers game, right? More calls you answer more people you're going to get connected with, the more people you get connected with, the more homes you're going to show, the more homes you show, the more deals you're going to get in contract. It's just the bottom line. So it start, that's the very, very top of the funnel, right? If, you know, and of course it matters what you do with the lead once you answer it and the quality of the conversation, that all comes into play. But at the very, very minimum, answering the phone more will get you more opportunity. Uh, and if you can't answer the phone because you're too busy, then you just got to let us know so that we can pause so that those leads disperse to the rest of the people. We have enough people on the team now where if someone, if a few people are paused, you know, for a week or two, there's enough people to cover those other leads. Because remember, Zillow is not going to stop. If they projected uh, right now, they're projecting about 196. And that number usually always goes more than that. Um, probably by about 50 or so. So we'll probably get close to 250 connections this month. If they tell us 250, they're going to keep pushing until we hit 250 or get close to that number, right? So if everyone decides to take the month off or maybe half the team and there's only half the team on, that means all those people who are on are going to get all those calls coming in, right? And then that person, those people can get overwhelmed really fast. So it's kind of just that fine line of balancing it all. Now, I want to pull something up because this is something that um, my growth advisors sent us. And this kind of addresses some of the stuff that AJ was asking about. So he pinged one of his colleagues that has had success in improving Flex Partners answer rates and his feedback of potential causes of uneven connection calls um, because that's what we saw also let me go back to this right call attempts you can see like herving had 341 and if i scroll all the way down there's some people that only had 45 in the last 30 days and a lot of you guys are on the same zip codes so there's a big discrepancy right some people are getting 200. Some people only had their phone ring 45 times, right? And so on. So here's what we got to look at on why that could be happening. So number one is Wi-Fi connectivity and cell service can play a role in that. Agent A could have the phone turned off. So it rang to agent B's phone before agent A even had a chance to register, right? So let's say like, I don't know, in your in your uh, settings, you have it on Wi-Fi only or something. And for some reason you weren't connected to Wi-Fi and the phone didn't go through, you might've missed that, that opportunity, even though it should have went to you, but it didn't, it didn't ring to your phone. Some agents have an iPhone app that auto answers calls from whatever numbers you program into it, which can cause some team members' phones to never even ring. So if you guys have any special apps that play around with how your calls are being answered, that can also affect this right here. If you're not on Wi-Fi, make sure, make sure your Wi-Fi is off on your phone. 
that's another thing too. Um, especially with iPhone. I don't know if some of you guys have this issue, but it seems like iPhone is always trying to connect to Wi-Fi. Even when I go in there and turn it off, it still always asks if I want to connect to Wi-Fi. And if you have Wi-Fi calling set up on your phone, then that could affect if you're getting calls or not, depending if your Wi-Fi is connected or not. I don't know if anybody can, does anybody know about that? Or can anybody comment on that? That's crazy. That never happened on Android. I know. Crazy. <laughs> um, right here, it says, make sure the following settings below um, are made by your agents if they haven't already done so. So this is something to pay attention to, guys, right here. So in the app, number one, make sure you downloaded the most recent version of the app. So you may have to go into the app store and update the app if it's not already automatically updated. In your settings, turn on push notifications. Do you want to make sure push notifications are turned on so that you're getting these your phone to ping when a call comes through? Uh, something else, turn on the microphone. Allow Premier Agent to access microphone, background app refresh, refresh cellular data. You see how they have all these settings turned on. Yeah, so at the very minimum, Check your settings. Make sure this is all happening right here. You got the latest version. You got your notifications turned on. You got your microphone turned on in your settings. And make sure your cellular data and app refresh is turned on as well. Any questions on any of this so far, guys? Okay. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was this stuff here. Just pay attention to agent fatigue, quality of calls, and disengagement with flex. And this is a conversation we've had before. Um, but what happens naturally, guys, you know, as we get busy, and you've been doing this for a while, it gets really easy to not be as motivated and as enthusiastic on your incoming calls as if it was your first one, right? Like when we first started Flex and you got your first Flex call, like everyone was like freaking pumped up. Oh, my first Flex, you're like treating it like, you know, like it's your very first call, right? But after you received a hundred Flex calls, you know, and you're like freaking overwhelmed and you're tired and you got showings today and you got another call and like the stress levels are up and stuff like that. It's very easy to not bring your A game on that hundredth call because you've done it so many times, right? Or because you're just overwhelmed, or you're juggling a lot of things. So we need to be conscious of that. We need to be conscious of the fact that we have an energy transfer, right? Every single time you talk to someone on Flex, that's potentially someone's first home they're ever going to buy. It's a big deal for them, right? By the time someone got the courage to go online, look at properties and, and click, I'm interested on this one. They could have already been searching online for months. They could have already been preparing for this moment for a long time. They could have been saving up their down payment, what have you. There's a lot of things that could have happened for them to get to this moment of saying, I'm going to reach out to an agent to go see this home, right? So we need to be conscious of the fact that our energy needs to be up there, right? We need to be happy. We need to talk to people. We need to laugh. We need to make them feel great as if it was your very first call that you've taken. If you just constantly remind yourself that, whatever you have to do to remind yourself, whether you got to write yourself a post-it note or just remind yourself of your energy um, that you're bringing or stand up, right? Even just the simple fact of standing up while you're doing calls it changes the quality of your call. It changes your energy level because you're moving around, you're up, your body's going, right? Um, 
if you're just, if, I, if I'm doing this flex, this meeting right now and I'm like laid back and I'm super chilling in my seat, right? Like I'm going to come off like that, right? So just changing your physiology, right? The way you stand, the way, you know, chest out, all those different things, you're going to be able to project your voice even more, um, right? So you got to do what you got to do to get into your peak state so that when you do talk to people over the phone, you sound great, right? Uh, Louis wrote consistency and excitement on every single call, right? That's cool. Like if, if, if you're not a super, super bubbly person, you know, and as soon as the calls hang up, you want to go shrug your shoulders, by all means, do what you got to do. But as soon as that call comes on and as soon as you answer, you need to stand up. You need to shake it off. You need to put your chest out. You need to be ready to speak and be ready to bring your A game and be ready to win that client over and get them excited about meeting with you, right? Because for some of us, we know what to say, but it's how we're saying it that makes the big difference, right? Like even right now, like I can deliver this, you know, yeah, guys, just answer the phone more, you know, do it. But if I'm like, guys, we need to freaking answer the phone more because if you answer this phone, you're going to change someone's life. And I really like freaking pound the message to you guys. Like it's going to be a lot more effective, you know, when I'm trying to train you guys. It's the same thing on the phone, right? If you sound excited, enthusiastic, that client is going to feel that energy and positive energy is contagious, right? And they're going to be like, oh, this person sounds like a nice person. I want to meet them. Some of you guys are naturally great at that. Some of you guys have to work a little harder to bring the energy. And that's okay. Some of us are gifted with just being louder or more enthusiastic. Um, AJ is a good example. AJ, is he there still? Well, anybody who's worked with AJ, who's spoken with AJ, mm -hmm. what kind of energy does AJ bring? <laughs> Unmute yourself over there, AJ. Show me your energy. Oh, I always bring the energy. AJ. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, AJ, you have you always been... Have you always been enthusiastic like this? Is this how you naturally have been your whole life? I would say uh, not naturally all the time, but it's, I mean, yeah, I think I'm a ball of energy. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like that lightning bolt on your forehead. I just bring that energy all the time. I think it, uh, apart from, you know, uh, included in the business, it just makes people want to meet with you, right? Like, and that's why I had a, a little bit of practice with some of the ISAs and junior agents yesterday. It's like, you got to, you gotta make them want to show up. You gotta, you know what I mean? They're like, they're gonna like, oh, I'm gonna meet with a realtor. Like, this guy sounds cool. I want it. And then, like, it kind of flows into having that energy. Like, I could invite it to parties, weddings, baby yeah. showers, you know, because I'm like a guy that they just want to like hang around all the time. And it, you know, obviously it kind of displays in my business. But bring that energy. It's all about that energy, that hype vibe. I think I called AJ last night, like what, like 12:30 or something. And he was like, hey. I was like, what's up? I was like, what are you on, bro? Like, it's like 1230. I just want to, I just need a question answered. He's like, hey, man, what's up? What I'm it like, is. Yeah, what so. it is. Yeah. I know every single time that I've talked to AJ or whether it's on the phone in person, like he's always hyped. He gets me hyped. Like I get excited just being around AJ because his energy is just contagious. Right. But I can tell you right now, not everyone is naturally gifted like that, right? Maybe he's naturally gifted. Maybe he's learned to channel that energy. Maybe he knows how to turn it on. Maybe over time he's done that, or maybe he was just born that way, or maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. But a, <laughs> you got you to gotta be able to bring that, right? You got to be able to bring that. You got to be able to channel that energy. If that's not you and you're naturally not the most enthusiastic person, you got to do something, right? You got to do something. We talked about something called, um, this is a conversation I had with Zahara a long time ago, was checking your vibe, a vibe check, right? Before you walk into every single room, before you walk through any doorway, ask yourself in your mind, what kind of vibe and energy am I bringing into this room right now that I'm about to walk into? Let me repeat that again. Before you step into any doorway, whether you're, you're getting out of your car and you're about to walk into the office or you're about to walk into your house or, or whatever it might be, when you're, when you're passing through a doorway and you're going from one room to another room, vibe check. If you got to stop, shake it off. All right, vibe check. I'm about to bring the energy right now. Walk into that room, then you bring the energy.
you got to do that on the phone too. All right, my phone's ringing. I booked this. It's connecting me. Hi, Alex here. About to connect you with the call. Five check. All right, let's go. Right. Hey, Haley, it's Enrique, your Zillow premier agent. Hey, I'm great to connect with you. I saw you're interested in one, two, three Main Street. How's your day going, by the way? Bam. Not like uh, scrambling, fumbling the phone. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, I'll get back. To, right. Like there's totally different quality of call. Right. You guys. Let's get what I'm trying to say. So if you're not the happy-go-lucky person, number one is you better change that ASAP. Or number two is you better get out of this business. It's two choices. You either change it and you learn how to channel the energy and you learn how to do what you got to do to bring that energy and learn how to turn it on and turn it off. Or you find another job. Because right, I'm just telling you right off the bat, if you, you do not bring an energy and you do not, you're not able to connect with people and get them to feel good, your, your job is going to be really, really difficult. It's really, really difficult. And that doesn't mean you have to change, change who you are forever, that you can turn it off and turn it on. Any of you guys that, have, that know me you know, and hang out with me outside of work, I'm pretty chill like, when I'm outside of work. But when I come in and I know I got to do this meeting or I got to bring the training, like I know how to turn that shit on. I know how to step into character. I know how to step into, you know, that side of me of being, you know, funny or louder, or enthusiastic or inspiring or whatever that I have to do to get it going. Like it's something that I can turn on now. And it's taking me time to build that, to be able to turn it off and turn it on. Right. But we all have that in us, you know, you just got to channel it. You got to find it. So to conclude this, right, I'm going to do something right now. When I count to three, I want you guys to all make some noise, right? I want you guys to practice channeling this energy right now. I want you to pretend that I just called you and I just told you that you just won the lotto and you won $50 million and you just won the lotto, right? So unmute, unmute, everybody, please unmute. I don't care if you're at home or you're in the office or you're driving or wherever you're at. I want you to freaking unmute right now. Let's go, million dollars. Oh, hold, on. Oh, hold, on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I quit. Hold on. I quit. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what money? We're going to role play this. I'm calling you right now and you answered the phone and I'm just going to tell you that, hey, you know what? I got some news to tell you. You just won the fucking lot. You just won $50 million. Let's go, right? Let's go! Oh my God, no way. Let's go! Are you Dude. Let's go! Let's go! $50 million! Let's go, Let's 50 go. million! You get a car, you get a car. You get a car, you get a car. You guys. <laughs> We got pizza in the office. Let's go, pizza. Oh, pizza. I want you to stand up, too. Stand up and do it. Stand up. One more time, guys. Stand right. up. Stand up. You're not standing up already? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Fifty million dollars. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. You get pizza. You get pizza. You get pizza. No. <laughs> Think about that now. Like all you guys are smiling now because this was fun and it was funny, right? And you did what you had to do. Now you're smiling. Now jump on a call and now take a Zillow Flex call, right? How are you going to sound now that you just did that? And now you got to take the Zillow Flex call. My freaking heart's, you know, from screaming, I'm, I'm, I'm excited right now. I'm freaking, my heart's pumping a little bit right now, right? So now I'm going to be taking this call like, you know, hey, Louise, yeah, man, great to meet you. Let's go out there and see this property today. I'd love to see, you know, love to meet you. love to take you out there. How soon are you guys looking to get into a home? You know, I'm excited. Boom, right? You bring that level of energy on every single call, your business will go through the roof. If you bring that level of energy on every single appointment you go on, every time you show a home, 
every time you speak to someone about your business and you explain how excited you are about all the good things that are happening to you, your business will go through the roof. Just the simple fact that you transferred your energy and you got people motivated and uplifted, right? And then if you're able to do that and you're able to improve your scripts, right? And you're able to improve your knowledge and your know-how and your value and you put all those together, boom, it's an explosion, right? You're going to go, you're going to go places. You're going to go far. So it's the energy. It starts with the energy though, right? It starts with that energy, right? Like pretend you're wearing this freaking lightning bolt on your head every single day. And you just got hit by lightning of a burst of positive energy. And you're going to brighten someone's day and you're going to get them excited about buying a home. Cause I promise you guys buying a home can be nerve wracking. It could be stressful. You know, people are stressed out, right? But they're looking to you as the leader to take them to the finish line and to make them feel good about it, to hold their hand, to guide them and to transfer that positive energy to them. So you guys really got to embrace that and just know that you have the power to impact someone and to change their lives today. And Mercury is out of retrograde. Go figure. That's probably why we, we couldn't. <laughs> that's why probably why some people aren't getting Zillow calls because Mercury's out of retrograde. The market's on retrograde. Come on, get it together. Dude, the, the freaking market's on Gatorade right now. <laughs> <laughs> the market, yeah, it's crazy right now. Guys, um, this is all I got for you today. I hope you got some things. Real quick in the chat, real quick in the chat, what's the one takeaway you got today? The one or two things that stood out most in this conversation today. Put it in the chat, please. Energy, energy, stay positive. Bring the energy, bring the energy. Check your vibe at the door. Notice how no one said, uh, I got to improve my answer rate. right it's all right also improve answer rate there you go no one said uh, our conversion rate needs to increase or answer rate or anything like that it's all energy right and this this just further proves as salespeople, right like we love being in the mix we love being in the in the race we love we know we love being in the chase right like it's just if you're a natural uh, a salesperson you love that, right? You love the interaction with people, right? That, that gets you going. Um, you know, and that's great, right? So you can, you can improve that by just bringing a better, better level of energy, right? And you also got to know your numbers too. Um, good stuff, guys. I appreciate all you guys. I hope you guys got something out of today. If you need anything, let me know. Make sure to answer those calls. The more calls you answer, if you can handle them, if you can't handle them, then you got to let us know to pause you. But if you, if you have capacity to handle more calls, then handle them, right? Make sure you're answering those calls. The more calls you answer, the more, the more leads you get. Uh, really quick for everyone on on the in the Zoom world, we're gonna do a buyer consult training after this. So join the uh, morning call sesh Zoom Zoom link on the calendar. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, give us yeah we're gonna give us ten minutes. Everyone here is gonna get pizza. If you're at home right now, you still got time. I don't know if there's gonna be pizza left, but uh, yeah, just join in like ten minutes. Ten minutes. So there you go. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Ten minutes. Seppi. Yeah. Spoiler. 12 50. 12 50. Right. morning call sash guys i'll see you on there let's go let's go 50 million let's go. you just won the lotto you just won let's the lotto go. let's go 50 M's. Let's 50 go. M's. all right guys have a good one we'll see you soon yes sir uh,